Planeta Bur, Russian, Planeta Bur is a 1962 Sovskala Soviet science fiction film scripted by Alexander Kazantsev from his novel, and co scripted and directed by Pavel Klushanzyev. In English, the film is often informally referred to as Planet of the Storms, Planet of Storms, Planet of Tempests, Planeta Berg, and Storm Planet, though it was never actually released in the USA in its original form until the 1990s, via home video. It is better known to American audiences via two American television movies which featured special effects and most of the primary footage from it, Voyage to the Prehistoric Planet and Voyage to the Planet of Prehistoric Women. Synopsis Three Soviet spaceships, Sirius, Vega, and Capella, are on their way to the planet Venus. The Capella is struck by a meteorite and destroyed. The remaining two ships, Sirius and Vega, continue on, despite the fact that the planned mission required three ships. A replacement spaceship, the Arcturus, will be sent from Earth, but will not arrive for two months. The cosmonauts aboard Sirius and Vega decide that some sort of landing and exploration is better than waiting. Ivan and Alan go down from Vega in the glider, leaving Marsha in orbit. All contact is lost after they land in a swamp. The Sirius lands nearby and the three-man crew set out in their hovercar to find them. During their travels they hear an eerie woman's song in the distance and encounter prehistoric beasts both benign and threatening. Ivan and Alan, meanwhile, must fight off some man-sized T-Rex-like beasts as they head to meet the men of Sirius. The two fall ill with a fever. Their robot, John, stands watch. The Sirius crew must submerge their hovercar to escape a pterosaur. In doing so, they discover what might have been an ancient city. Alyosha finds a strange triangular rock and a statue of a pterosaur with rubies for eyes. Once on dry land, the Sirius crew contact the robot John and tell him to administer an anti-fever drug. Ivan and Alan recover just as a volcano sends down rivers of lava. They order John to carry them across, but he malfunctions halfway there. The hovercar shows up just in time to rescue them while John is lost to the lava. All five return to Sirius, but worry that Marsha had landed the Vega somewhere, stranding them all. An earthquake and flood from rain threaten to strand the Sirius, so they must take off immediately. Alyosha discovers that his odd triangular rock is really a sculpture of a woman's face, proving that there might still be intelligent life on Venus. They blast off and find that Marsha remained in orbit and together they head home. Topic: Personnel. Topic: Cast. Vladimir Yemelyanov as Ilya Vasilyevich Vershinin. Georgi Zhanov as Roman Bobrov, Gennady Vernov as Alyosha, Yuri Saranzyev as Ivan Sherba, Georgi Teek as Alan Kern, Kyana Ignatova as Marsha Ivanova, Boris Prudkovsky as Robot John Production team Z. Anderson as production director, Vladimir Yemelyanov and L. Presnyakova as producers, 
A. V. Markov, K. K. Flyorov, V. G. Denisov, and A. M. Kasatkin as scientific advisors. Topic Crew M. Sabasov and V. Alexandrov as production designers I. Yegorov, V. Makarov, V. Malakieva and A. Nadezhdin as art directors V. Shkelkov as special effects art director A. Klimov as director of photography a. Lavrontiev as Special Effects Director of Photography R. Levitin as Sound Recordist A. Belyavskaya and I. Yasnopolskaya as Assistant Directors V. Suslov as Film Editor Johan Admoni and Alexei Chernov as Music Composers Topic: American adaptations. In 1965, producer Roger Corman acquired rights to the Soviet film and gave it to film student Curtis Harrington to prepare for American release. Harrington added several American-made scenes starring Basil Rathbone and Faith Domig, which replaced scenes of two of the Russian cast, and dubbed the rest of the material. The dubbed result, under the name Voyage to the Prehistoric Planet, went directly to television via American International Pictures. In the cast and credits, Russian actors' names were replaced with invented non-Russian names, for example, the famous Russian actor Georgi Zhanov was credited as Kurt Bowden. In 1968, Peter Bogdanovich, under the name Derek Thomas, again at Corman's behest, created a different American version, adding new scenes involving Mamie Van Doren and several other attractive women in Shell Brassiers, which was titled Voyage to the Planet of Prehistoric Women. The new Scenes also included minor footage from another Russian SF film, Mikhail Karyukov's Nebo Zovia. This version is essentially the first film retold, with the parallel viewpoint of the telepathic women whose god a pterosaur is killed by the men from Earth. There is an ironic twist at the end when the women find a new god. This version may have had some limited theatrical release on the drive-in circuits in the American South, but primarily also became a TV movie through American international television. Topic: Reception. In a retrospective on Soviet science fiction film, British director Alex Cox remarked that in its final minutes, Planet of Storms takes an extraordinary turn. I shall not spoil the secret, but it's worth the wait. <laughs> Notes <laughs>